Hey everybody, welcome to Glory Bible Study. It is your family in the glory, Joshua and Janet Mills. And I'm telling you, Janet, I am so excited about this program today. I'm so excited about this Glory Bible Study. You are about to be blessed beyond your wildest imagination. So I want to make sure that you go ahead and share this broadcast with your friends, with your family. We're going to be speaking to a very special guest today that is going to tell us all about going from a lifestyle of being a gangster to a lifestyle of serving the kingdom of God and the glory. So, I mean, you, you talk about total transformation, complete transformation. Wow. I mean, from a place uh, where there's such great darkness and then brought into glorious light, glorious light. <laughs> yep. Wow. Listen, some of you have kids that have been struggling. Some of you are praying for your grandchildren, your brother, your sister, maybe even your parents, your aunts, your uncles. And uh, it looks like they are living a lifestyle that's totally contrary to the word of God. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you, do not give up. Do not lose heart. Amen. Don't lose hope because God has a way. And you're going to hear tonight about how God's way changes everything. And uh, well, it says in the Bible that when mm -hmm. we don't give up, when we don't grow yep. weary, at the appointed time, we shall see the harvest. You're right. And this is the time of harvest. And even last week on Glory Bible Study, we were sharing about the power of testimony. Yep. We were sharing about a hey, do, do it again, Lord. Yes. Tonight, there's an opportunity mm -hmm. for you to step into the do it again for those people that you're believing for, maybe you're going to be watching this glory Bible yeah. study and it's you that needs that transformation to be taken from a place of darkness into his marvelous light. Open up your heart to receive. Yeah. You're going to hear a testimony where you're going to say, God, do this again. We need to see this in our family, in our city, in our church, in our community. We need to see this again. And so open up your hearts, get ready for what God wants to do. There's so much that God is releasing today. Janet, we've been receiving so many miracle testimonies about God just moving in people's lives, working healings, financial miracles, family restorations. God is on the move. Our is God on move. is on the move. The glory is increasing. Come on, just lift up your hands in the glory right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we welcome yes, Lord. your glory here right now. God, we thank you that you are, are here among us. You said that we're two or more gathered in your name. You are there in the midst. Yes, you are. And so, Lord, we thank you for being in the midst thank of you, us. Lord. We thank you for releasing your power, your power for salvation, your power for deliverance, your power for miracles. God, I ask you to invade every single home. Whew. I can feel that right there. Yes. I sense the glory just begin to move right now into every home. God is moving into your home right yes. now. Just lift up your hand. Just Thank feel you, the glory. Sense the glory of God coming upon you as God is moving in his miracle working power. And I feel like there's an mm. impartation of hope and that hope yep. being transferred into another dimension of faith, believing for impossible situations turned into possibilities. Yeah. Wow. Impossibilities turned into possibilities. That's our God. Yeah. He can do anything. With God, all things are possible. He's able to turn around any situation. And, you know, some of you, you felt the weight of the world and you've been carrying unnecessary burdens. Mm. You've been dealing with a lot of maybe what people call baggage, um, even past traumas, yeah. the history, um, really difficult situations, and you've been carrying it. And I've got a scripture that I want to open up for you tonight here on Glory Bible Study. Janet, I want to turn to Matthew chapter 11. Okay. And I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Classic edition of the Bible here, starting in verse 28. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, Come on. And I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly mm. in heart. And you will find rest 
relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet. Don't you love that? The <laughs> definition of rest. Yes. Relief and ease and refreshment and re recreation and blessed that. quiet Yes. for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome. It's useful. It's good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but it's comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. I love that description because that's, yes. that so describes the glory presence of God. Mm -hmm. And when we invite Jesus to come into our hearts and be a part of our lives, when we invite him to be our personal Lord and Savior, he gives us this invitation saying, hey, come to me so that I can carry your stuff so you don't have to carry it any longer. Yeah, no more carrying the heavy mm -hmm. weights. Give it to me so that you can in turn carry the weight of my glory. Yes. The weight of his glory is exactly the yoke that that's the Bible the, that's describes. That's the heavy weight we do want, his uh -huh. glory. It's the relief, ease, refreshment, recreation, and blessed quiet <laughs> yes. for our souls. It's comfortable, it's gracious, and it's pleasant. Thank you, and then Lord. it ends here and it says, my burden is light and easy to be born. The only burden that God puts upon us is the weight of his glory. Mm -hmm. And so he's giving us an invitation to... Just let go of every weight, every yes. natural weight, every heavy weight of sin, every uh, weight of the past. Just let it go and just receive the weight of his glory that comes upon you where you can feel the blessing. You can feel his peace. You can feel his kindness. You can feel his grace and his mercy. Jesus is here tonight to minister yes. to every area of need. Wherever you hurt, he wants to heal it. Wherever you've lost hope, he wants to impart new faith. Yeah. And it, no, matter, no matter where you've been, where you've come mm, from, what you've done, there's an invitation for you today to step into the fullness yeah. of life that he has for you and to fully embrace and receive his immeasurable, eternal, unconditional love. Wow. He's here. That's a huge invitation. He's here. It's a huge invitation. Well, listen, I don't want to delay any further because we have an amazing guest that's going to be joining us tonight. Um, our guest is co-host and executive producer of The Jim Baker Show, host of The Mondo Show, and executive vice president of television programming for the PTL Television Network. He is also known for his creative contributions to other nationally syndicated television shows as a director and producer. And with the support of his wife, Elizabeth, and their twins, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Mila and Mateo. Do you think that's right? I, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Listen, he continues to follow the path God laid out for his life as he shares his story around the world. I want you to please welcome to Glory Bible Study, Mr. Mondo De La Vega. Oh, you, did, you did fantastic. <laughs> Thank hey, you for so excited the opportunity. To have you. So I cannot tell here. you how humble I am. I watch you from afar on Instagram. And the two of you are amazing people in ministry and people in, in itself. And I'm just honored to be invited. Um, thank you. I appreciate your time. Well, listen, we are very honored to have you on Glory Bible Study. Janet and I both have been reading your <laughs> brand new book. Listen, yeah. everybody, today is release day yes. for this brand new book, My Crazy Life by Mondo de la Vega. You need to get a copy of this book. I'm telling you, Mondo, Mondo it is, I can hardly put it down. It is so <laughs> captivating. It, that's a great mm. description mm -hmm. right there. Thank Very you. Very captivating. Um, what led you to write this book? I mean, how did, how, how did you get to this place? Wow. That's a full loaded <laughs> question. First and foremost, thank you for reading the book. This book has been a 26-year process. Wow. You know, 26 years ago, I walked into a book convention with Jim Baker, and I met up with Steve Strang, and I had offers to write this book 26 years ago with three major publishers. Yet, I got excited. Uh, I was thrilled, honored, yet. I asked my mentor, Jim Baker, I said, I need your advice. I said, I just got this three offers. I got the paperwork in front of me, the contracts. Uh, you've written a lot of books. What's, what's the first step I should take? And he said, I need you to sit down. And he said, I'm happy for you. I'm beyond thrilled. He said, but if you do this, it's going to hurt you right now. Wow. It might make you famous. 
Uh, it's going to expose you more. And those are all great things. He said, but you're not ready for it. And wow. you can keep it right now, but it's not going to last forever. Or you can trust God. And later in your life, God will bring this to pass if it's God's will. Wow. And it crushed me because I wanted my mentor to be happy. And he was happy. And he looked back and he said, you still have the other side of life to live. If you want to give them mm -hmm. a gangster story, you can go ahead and give them that. But the glory is going to go to the gangs. Or you can wait. Now, this is a word for somebody. Come on. Because this is what Pastor Jim told me. He said, right now, you're not stable in your ways. There's no stability in your life. You've accepted Christ. You started walking in the Lord. But there's no stability in your life. God doesn't work with people that are not stable. God is not a God of chaos. God doesn't give a word to someone that is in or out. He said, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in his ways, number yep. one. Number two, God only works with yes or no, but not maybe. And mm. there's a lot of people that may be watching me right now, and you're asking God, God, open the doors for me. God, give me a word for me. God, I want to be successful in my marriage and my business and my family and my ministry. I want to be famous. I want to be, yet you're not stable in your ways. How can God trust you? And you not be stable. What yeah. do I mean? People are running from one church to another and, and they're going trying to find a word here. And they don't stay in one place long enough for God to use them there. Wow. And what Pastor Jim was telling me is at that moment was you're not stable mentally. You don't even believe in marriage. You don't believe mm. in having kids. There's a lot of things that now you have to understand. By this time, I was traveling all over the world sharing my story. Wow. And God rebuked me in Scandinavia. And God said, now none of this is inside this book. A lot of this is, is some things that I just wanted to share before we lay the foundation. Sure. Yeah, so because good. Because a lot of people, a lot of people fall in love with the gifts of God. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. great. And then people want to invest in the calling of God and they build their whole ministry on that. Yet they're not in God's will. Uh oh, right. you're going to get me preaching now. It's true. Breach. All right. I'm, I'm going to teach you something that I had to learn for 20, 26 years. Because I found myself in Scandinavia. And how did I get there? Pastor Tommy Barnett, which I write in my book, and Matthew Barnett, the founders of the Dream Center in Los Angeles, gave me the opportunity to speak for five minutes in front of 10,000 pastors. Wow. After five minutes, I had speaking engagements for the last for the next 10 years. I was wow. being booked so fast and I started traveling and doing all this. And then I found myself in Scandinavia and I went and I was getting ready to sign a contract for a TV deal. You know, Europe was ahead of its time on reality shows and yeah. they wanted to put cameras and, and follow me with a crew all over uh, Scandinavia and speaking and doing all these great things. And then I felt the Holy Spirit begin to wanting to talk to me. Right. And the first thing I learned was you have to learn how to hear from God in mm. the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the noise. I learned real quick how to develop the, the voice of God. And I asked these people, I need to excuse myself. I need to go think about this decision. I'll get back to you guys in the morning. By the time I got to my room, I'm thinking God is going to give me a word for the next conference that's going to change the next generation. And I'm going to be a world shaker and a history maker. And God right. is going to give me the word. Right. Yet God takes me to Matthew chapter seven and rebukes me pretty much says, I never knew you depart from me. And here wow. I am speaking all over the world. Yet I don't know him here. I'm laying hands on people, praying on them. Yet I had never experienced that. And God said, I need you to go home and get to know me. Find wow. my will for you. What I'm trying to tell you is that the church are great at recognizing the call of God and the gifts of God, but never pointing people to the will of God. Mm. Because the will of God is in the wilderness. Hmm. I had to go back to the wilderness in order to find this book for 26 years later. Understand that the process is not a tomorrow process. And God's yeah. timing, it can take 20 years, 30 years. I'm not saying that's for you. But the key is, are you willing to be obedient and say yes to God? Because God doesn't work on maybes. 
Right. It's maybe so I'll true. work on my mar- on my marriage. Maybe I'll start a ministry. Maybe I'll give some uh, money. Maybe I'll support them. No, it's either yes or no with God because God works with yes and he builds the kingdom or God works with no and he picks He picks somebody else that is willing to right. say yes. Yeah. So yeah. the book was birthed on the factor that I needed to find the will of God for my life and that was to have an intimate relationship with Jesus. So, so yes. when the exposure came, the exposure was not going to be my foundation. The right. autographs and the pictures and, and speaking to all these places and people wanting your time. The foundation was going to be that I needed to fall in love with Jesus and yes. trust that the will of God is wow. the foundation to the future that God is now opening the doors back up again to write this book. And I, now I needed to write about the 26 years of the other side of the story. Mm-hmm. That's the stability that God was looking for in my life. And yet God was bringing mentors and people in my life that only God could have put those people in my life. I'm just the next gangster that fell in love with Jesus. I'm an ex gangster <laughs> that the world said, lock him up and throw the key away. Mm-hmm. I'm an ex gangster that my own homeboys, my own neighborhood, my own society, my own culture said, don't make plans past 18 years old because you're wow. not going to be alive. You're going to be dead or you're going to be in prison or you're going to be in the hospital paralyzed. So don't make any plans. That would wow. shock wow. you. That would change you. That would that would do something inside of you yes. that you learn to live fast and you learn to live without purpose and destiny. Yet the birth of this book was 26 years ago to understand that the will of God is often found in places of the wilderness. Yeah, wow. totally. I love what you said about saying yes to God, being willing to say yes. And then once we do say yes, oftentimes that begins the process of preparation. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's our it. willingness to say yes. And it's clear as we've read your book, uh, My Crazy Life, which I recommend everybody gets a copy of. Um, oh, as we read this book, we can see how God's hand is upon your life as you say yes. And it's amazing the way that he has woven divine connections and the right people in the right places at the right time for you. And the whole book, it starts with your life in, was it South America? Yeah, Central America. Central America, sorry. Yeah, Central America. Um, And just the way that God has led you to this day, it is a miracle story. It really is. You know, you're absolutely right, because often we forget that in the middle of our crisis, God can deliver a prophetic word that can give you the hope you need in order to cross to the other side. My world fell apart when my father... Now, you, I want you to understand, oh, people. This is a crazy story. My father was my hero. My father mm-hmm. was everything to me. My father never spanked me. He never yelled at me. He never lashed out on me. My father was a gentleman with me and my sister. Yet, I didn't realize that my father had been dealing with some trauma of his own that he started taking it out on my mother. Yeah. And one evening changed everything. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, for years... I could not hold a broomstick. I could not put a broomstick in my own home later in life because a broomstick became a weapon of my mother's demise. My father beat my mother with the broomstick close to death. Here I am six years old watching my hero beat my mother close yeah. to death. And mm-hmm. at six years old, I'm watching him and I'm paralyzed with fear, ho- wanting to help my mother. Yet my mother was dying. My mother was in, in a fiddle position crying for help and there was no other adults in the room and yet the birth of anger yeah. the birth of revenge the, the 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 birth of trying to get even began to become a root inside of my soul not even my heart my soul it became yeah. an obsession to get even with my father it became an obsession to have hate towards him And I used to think that life can change in 24 hours. But Mm -hmm. after writing this book, I go back and realize that my life changed in a matter of seconds. We went from having Mm -hmm. a home and a family home to now being on the run. And in the middle of that, a war took place, broke out in Central America that ravaged nations. Over a million refugees came out of that and landed in the United States that created an explosion of gang members that America was not ready for. Right. Yet 
It came from brokenness. And in the middle of my mother, my mother said this, and I write it in my book. My mother said, if I stay, he's going to kill me or I'm going to kill him. But mm -hmm. I have to take this kids out of here. That ripped yep. the very soul out of me because my father, my mother, my family was everything to me. And I, I became at that moment the, the perfect candidate to be in the gang. Yeah. I had the hatred. I had the 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 the, the sense of vengeance. Yeah, I didn't vengeance. know how to place those. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of that, I started dealing with depression, anxiety, abandonment issues, lack of trust, not understanding what was going on around me. And my mother landed in another nation in Central America. This is the hard part. My mom, her family was a wealthy family. We were good. My father's side of the family was a wealthy family, and they were good. We were not poor people. We were people that had it together. My father was a very successful agricultural man. Yes. My grandfather had been a mayor of our town twice in a row. Politicians would respect them. I mean, the, it, it was unbelievable. Yet the trauma that my father was dealing with became the demise of their marriage, and that was the birth of me saying, I will never get married and I will never have kids. Mm. Wow. And that wow. hunted me, right? And everything began in that moment, landed in another nation in Central America and landed to the point where the only thing we had to eat was tortillas with salt and lemon for months, months and months. And I'm here six, seven years old. What is going on? Wow. What is happening? But in the middle of that crisis, God delivers a prophetic word for my mother that began to change how she felt about hope, you know, wow. and I don't want to give up too much. But my mother landed in a big mega church in Central America. And we yeah. were the three of us, my sister, myself and my mother. No one knew we were there. No one even, we didn't even know what was going on. The Pentecostals right. and speaking in tongues. I'm looking <laughs> at like, where am I? What is going on? And the worship music starts dying now and someone starts speaking in tongues. Now, you got to understand, this is 10,000 member church. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find out if you're in the room and right. they begin to speak in tongues. Then the tongues begin to die down. And then an interpretation of tongues comes out and begins to say the prophetic word. I want you to read the book. I don't want to tell you what that prophetic word is because I'm telling you, when you recognize the prophetic word in the midst of your crisis, Come God on. will begin to turn the things around you. Because, so true. Again, we found ourselves in, 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 in the other nation in Central America. And my mom began to lose hope because they told her, why don't you just cross the border illegally and go over there? You know, you don't have to go put the paperwork in. And, and, and yet there was a problem. My mother was born in Los Angeles, California. The problem was my sister and I were born in Central America. Mm -hmm. And my mother said, I don't want my kids to go in there illegally. I don't want my kids to be ashamed of who they are and hide yes. all, their, all of their wow. lives. Yes. And she said, I don't care how much it takes me. I don't care how many jobs I have to take. But we're going to pay. We're going to figure out thousands of dollars to even put the process to get an interview for immigration to hear her story. And she kept getting denied, denied, denied after thousands of dollars being spent just to get yeah. denied. You wonder why people are escaping Central America? Because right. the bureaucracy makes it so difficult for our people to get processed in. There's so much the red time, tape. Oh, listen, it breaks my heart because people are yeah. desperate. And when you're desperate, you're willing to sell your farms, sell your land. And this is what there's, the people are doing, yeah. my right. people. You know, yet my mother said, I can't lose hope. God gave me a prophetic word. Mm -hmm. Yet after getting denied and denied and denied, my mother said, you know what? We're going to have to go over. Somebody paid for my mom and I to go to a resort and my sister. And she said, this kids cannot be dealing with these problems. They, can, they need to go swim. And my mother was sitting by the pool and a very <laughs> famous uh, Christian singer Amazing. says, uh, ma'am, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but God gave me a prophetic word for you. It was the same prophetic word that yeah. we had received two months wow. prior in that church. This is our God. This is amazing. The next day, 
my mother goes into the same person that's been denying her for months and doesn't even talk to her, hands her an envelope with my name on it, my sister's name on it, and says, your children are now U.S. born citizens. It's amazing. So amazing. Tell me there's not a God. Such a miracle story. It's amazing. That, I, I just want to remind people, don't lose hope. You got to get mm -hmm. a hold of prophetic word and stay with it. Stay yeah. stable with it. Don't change your mind because God doesn't change his mind about his prophetic That's word. It. The problem is we don't stay long enough rooted in one place to see that fruit grow. Right. So true. Oh, That's you're gonna so get me true. Teaching. God watches over <laughs> his word to make it happen. And when he gives us that prophetic word, like you've shared in the book, and listen, you have to get the book because it's it's amazing. That word that comes out in the mega church, and then it's repeated again at the resort um, through that celebrity. And then how the abundance flows, how the supernatural provision comes in that area. And then you guys end up in America. Yeah. God does what he t says that he's going to do. Yeah. You know, what's so amazing is we we got on the plane and my mother says, I need you to forget where you come from. Mm -hmm. I need you to forget your life back home, the language, the culture, the memories. I'm seven years old by this time, and I don't know what's happening. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. No one's asking me what's going on. Sometimes we forget yeah. that kids are paying attention. Yeah. And my mother, after I wrote the book, my mother was in tears. And she said, I didn't realize how much I've hurt you because I didn't communicate with you. Mm. He says, I was going through my own pain mm -hmm. and I forgot about your pain. And I want you to know something. By the time we got to the United States, we had moved about 12 different times by, with 12 different families. And families, our own families had pity on us, but we couldn't stay long enough with them because my father was looking for us. My father had gathered the military and the police going out finding us wow. yet the last words i heard my father say that shocked me and traumatized me was i don't want them anymore mm. that became a knife that got stuck in my soul that became the very seed of hatred the very yeah. seed of why I didn't believe in, in men. I didn't believe in families. I didn't believe in marriage. I didn't believe, how can you create me and not want me? How, what did I do so wrong as a six-year-old that caused you to say those words? Why did you express yourself that about me? And I heard you mm -hmm. and it hurt me deep in my soul that it fed something in me that prepared me to when we landed in the United States, I didn't know the language. I didn't know the culture. I didn't realize where we were going. But we enter into a new world that had opened their arms to me without me even realizing. I wasn't yeah. looking for a family in the gang. Yeah. I wasn't looking for someone to be my father or someone to be my mother. I just wanted to get even. Yet the gang culture was already set up. In the 1980s and 90s, there was an explosion of gang members in L.A. at that time had over what they recorded over 60,000 active gang members that wow. exploded into the scene. Now, you have to go back in history of 1980s and 90s. America was used to seeing Italian gangsters, Russian gangsters, hmm. Irish mobsters, but they never expected an inflection, an explosion of gang members that were from Central America, Mexico. Now, wow. there was already pachucos and gang members in East L.A., Mexican-Americans, right? And, but they never expected the explosion of Central Americans coming yeah. by the millions and change the culture of America. And this is what happens. America never dealt with that problem. What they did is they sent them back to Central America, yet the gangsters were birthed out of Los Angeles, California, and it changed the dynamic of America itself. Yet America never wanted to deal with the crime problem. They just sent wow. the problem back to Central America where they grew even more and it became an international problem. Wow. Wow. I write in my book, an expert told me after all this, that the gang that I was affiliated with and the gang that I was jumped into was the most notorious gang Till, his, till this day in history, the most notorious gang that was ever birthed in the United States. Wow. He said, cancer we can kill, 
but your gang, we can kill it and 10 more of you grow. And they keep growing Whoa. and growing Whoa. and growing. The problem became bigger than what America can handle, yet it was birthed out of brokenness, kids that were rejected, kids that were in pain, kids that didn't understand what was going on. All we knew is survival. And survival makes yeah. you do desperate things. Anything. Yeah. Yes. And I believe if you're watching me right now, I believe you're living in survival. I want to say two things. One, the picture of people entering America illegally, God showed me that there's a lot of people in the spirit realm trying to enter heaven illegally without going through the process. Mm. There's people that are, are not called to be evangelists yet, yet they're wanting to be evangelists. There's a process to being an evangelist. There's a process of being a pastor. There's a lot of process yes. that God puts in place, yet people are entering the spirit realm illegally without getting mm. processed the right way, number mm. one. Number two, the problem is that we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to deal with unforgiveness in the church. We don't want to deal with what's broken, the broken you. I write in my book, if people knew the real me, will they still consider me their gang member? If people knew the real me, would they still consider me their leader? And I think you can ask that question to yourself because in the gangs, I had to create an image and identity in order to protect the little boy that was in pain. Sure. And in the church and life itself, we create an image in order to protect where we have been hurt. And we build these great images. And then we wonder why do they fall apart in the midst of their success? Why do their marriage fall apart in the middle of, right. you know, growing their marriage? It's because we keep hiding the very person that and we never become free. It's built on false hope and false identities. And that's what the gang, the introduction was. If I can just build a false identity in order to hide the pain, hide the struggle, hide the brokenness, then I can create an image that someone else can fall in love with. But the problem is I created an image that became exhausting to keep up with. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. It seems like the enemy always tries to exploit our areas of weakness and he attempts to sh bring shame in the places of our greatest anointing. Yes. And it's clear to me, Mondo, that you were anointed. Well, number one, to be married, to have children, to have a family. And from the time that you were very, very young, the enemy attacked those areas because he knew the That's power good. that They're would good. be released through your life in that way if you connected to who you were really called to be. Wow. I and, never looked at it that way. Mm, Thank you for I that. Mean, yeah, totally. I mean, we were talking earlier how special Janet noticed that um, – there's endorsements in your book that are not like the standard endorsement. You know, I, I, um, I publish a lot of books and I, I know publishers ask us to find the most popular people, the biggest name speakers that are around people that other people pay attention to and get them to put some words of encouragement in the beginning of our books, because that's what helps sell books. Yeah. But you, and your wife and your two beautiful children, right? These and I, I don't think they you actually, to. yeah, they actually came they to you, right? To. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. And that was a beautiful thing. You're right. The publishers came to me and said, look, if we want to sell more books, uh, why don't you call all your famous friends and have them write a, an endorsement and that can help be on their platforms. And I said, you know, you know. Oh, uh, you're muted. The microphone just muted. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, you're, back. you're back. Awesome. Great. Sorry about that. The you know, the publishers asked me to do that, but the people that were part of my life were famous people by default. I, I went, I didn't go out sure. looking for them. You know, God gave me favor and has given me favor with a yes. lot of famous people in the secular world and non-secular world. But when my kids and my wife, you know came to me and said, dad, we wrote this endorsements, you know, can we put them in the book? And I was beyond honor because mm -hmm. for someone that you live with 24 hours a day and they see you're good, they you're bad you. and ugly, 
you know, mm -hmm. they're not going to lie for you. You know, they're <laughs> going right. to protect so you. They'll protect <laughs> you, but they won't lie for you. Uh -huh. uh, and when they did that, it meant the world to me because mm -hmm. I wanted them, I wanted the world to see that my life today, I used to think that um, it was my job and my responsibility to win the world for Christ. And it still is. Uh, some, uh, for some point, it still is. And, but that's a gift that is given mm -hmm. freely to do that. The responsibility physically, mentally, spiritually is for my job as a father. This is for me. Is to walk my kids all the way up to adulthood to see them make it, to be there yeah. present and to make sure that they have every ounce of guidance, every ounce of support, every ounce of correction, every ounce of everything that I couldn't get that I want them to give in order to have the greatest springboard to be mm -hmm. the greatest citizens and to share their dreams and to share their gifts into this world that God has given them. Yes. That is my fulfillment. So when they wrote the, when they wrote the endorsement, I couldn't believe it. I, <laughs> it. It was the greatest, most humble moment that I ever had. And here I, I could have had some of the greatest people in the world. Yet the people that endorse my book are people that have made an impact in my life for mm -hmm. the last 20 some years, yes. some in the last five years, you know, but, for the kids to do that, it's something that speaks volumes because here I was, I never wanted to get married and I never wanted to have kids. I was right? afraid of that. <laughs> well, I was such afraid a beautiful, of that. <laughs> such a beautiful testament and it adds to the book. Mm -hmm. It adds to the power of the testimony. It does. It adds to the power of the transformation that has taken place. And God really is highlighting families in this season mm -hmm. and yes. to see what you've walked through and and to see the the amazing transformation that's taken place, what a testimony to other people and to people presently maybe in the it's gangs. It's so true. To be able yeah. to get hope and to be able to see, wow, like God can do that for him. God can do that for me. Amen. There's so many people who are going through life right now and because of their past history, because of their struggles, because of where they've come from, the enemy tries to lie to them and make them think that they'll never be able to have a family, never be able to become a parent, never be able to do things that deep down in their heart have been there. Mm -hmm. um, and then even causes them to believe a lie like you did for many years. I don't want to get married. I don't want to. And it's all just really a front because of a deep hurt mm -hmm. that's on the inside. Yeah. But I love that in your book, you talk about the way that God began to deal with your heart. Yeah. And you talk about that little church that you went to where you begin to feel Jesus in that church and you begin yeah. to recognize that God was moving upon your life and you made the greatest decision of your life. Tell us about that a little bit. Wow. Just thinking about it doesn't get old. I hope you mm -hmm. never forget what that moment was for you. Never forget the moment that you received Christ and you had the opportunity to walk into a church and maybe walk into a conversation. Because for me, that was that's that's always been my foundation is never to forget that he had grace on me. Mm. You know, I subtitled the book, The Moments That Brought a Gangster to Grace. I believe that life is made up of great moments, difficult moments, moments of triumph, moments of despair, moments that you feel hopeless and helpless. At one point, I only felt good enough to be sitting at the table with pimps and hustlers and trigger wow. men's cartels and drug dealers wow. and gangsters. Yet I didn't feel good enough to be around regular people, a mom or a dad or a pastor, or even the honor for me to be even talking to you on your platform and, and, and having you guys inviting me for me is a tremendous honor because I, I didn't feel good enough to be a part of, of sitting at a table like this. Yet mm. I was so devalued. Yet I had money. I had the influence in the streets. I had the cars. I had everything that the world had given me at that moment because it was based on a false foundation of an identity yeah. that I had right. built. You have to understand in order to get to the moment of salvation, death was stalking me. I have a chapter in the book titled, uh, and it's hard for me to think about it because 
when I go back and, and see myself in that vehicle in that low rider, it should it should have been me that should have died at that moment. And I told I talk about it in my book that it should have been me because death was stalking me. Everywhere I went, I knew I was next. I titled the book My Crazy Life because the book represented Mi Vida Loca. Is the mm. three dots, yep. right? This one right yep. here. And then the teardrop, everybody always asks me what they mean. And I never tell it because it was an intimate moment. But in my book, I get intimate in describing what the three dots and the teardrop yep. means. And it's going to shock you on what it means. Mm -hmm. Because it tells you that the world wants you dead. The world had no plans for me. Mm -hmm. In my book, I describe how the gang every single day said, don't make plans past 18 years old and see yourself as a father. Don't see wow. yourself as a, as, a, as a human being or as a citizen. You're going to be dead or you're going to be in prison the rest of your life. Or you're going to be in the hospital. That's me be the loca. That's my crazy wow. life. You have to live up to that. You, you, I was living in survival mode. I was living, death was always near me. And I describe how death, I, I wanted to die so desperately because I wanted the misery to end. I wanted mm. the pain to end. I don't know if you've ever been there. But what kept me alive most of the time was the thought of suicide. Isn't that wild that the thought of suicide is what kept me alive in moments? Wow. Yet I wanted to die. I didn't want to live anymore, but I was scared of death at the same time. I never feared going to prison. I never feared, uh, you know, losing my life. I never fear, feared uh, getting in fights. I never feared the police. As a matter of fact, in one chapter, I write about uh, how the police beat me so bad and they dropped crazy. me off in a neighborhood that was the opposition, the enemy neighborhood. Yet who happens to be the leader of that neighborhood? His name was big red. And then right. I, I, I calculate everything. Big red, big red saved my life. Well, the blood of Jesus is red. Mm -hmm. The blood of Jesus saved my life. And God began to, and then I, a pack, a marble, a pack of marble reds saved my life. God used a pack of marble reds to save my life from being killed by an opposition of, of another gang. You have to read the book. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All it is. That, it's crazy. All that dro drove me. I was going insane. My mother was trying to preach to me. My grandmother, I remember, uh, uh, I disappeared for three days and the police beat me so bad and they dropped me off at this, you know, the blood Pyru neighborhood to have me kill and set me up. Yet God protected me in that moment. And God brought me back to my house and my grandmother said, you got demons inside of you. And I said, shut up, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. It went bananas. Everybody was, was afraid to, to step into my life, step into my mm -hmm. world. It's not that I was a big, tough gang member. I was a broken, hurt kid. This don't, listen, every gang member that is out there is trying to be Pablo Escobar and, and Griselda Blanco, and they want to be El Chapo. The, the truth is we were hurt little boys and girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. That we were living in survival mode, and we couldn't take one more person hurting us. A lot of people started using drugs and, and dying. I never touched drugs. I used them a little bit, but I never touched them. I it's sold so them surprising. Alive. It's so surprising. I was afraid of losing control. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose control. I didn't, I didn't like what drugs were doing to my friends, to my homeboys. And, and yet yeah. here I was selling them. It, but God was changing some situations. The moments that I should have been dead, God intervened in that moment. But yet it prepared me to when my sister, this is powerful. Everyone was afraid to walk into my world to show me hope. Yet my sister showed up because she had received another prophetic word that before the year was wow. going to be over, wow. that her brother was going to come to the Lord. Come on. Listen, wow. if God gives you a word. You got to press through. My sister will pray. My sister will fast for me. My sister was interceding for me. My sister, yeah. I didn't even know what the heck she was doing. And I would yeah. look at her <laughs> and, 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 and mock her. And, and, and yet she kept minding her business. She knew. When, she trusted. When she, she walked into my world, my sister risked her reputation. She risked her own life. She risked everything to believe that God had wow. given her that word. 
She never came to me and preached to me. She never damned me to hell. She never said, it's time, man. You need to get your life right. And she never said that. She left me alone. She focused on her on the will of God. Mm. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Because when you're focused on the will of God, you don't waste time wasting your words. It's true. You understand? You save yeah. it for the will of God, for the right moment. Because when it happens, the Red Sea opens. Come yes. on, somebody. Yes, I, I can preach yes. on this for a long time, but I want to tell yes. you something. She walked in and she begins to deliver three of the most powerful phrases that changed my life. I'm going to give no, you know what? Get the book. <laughs> yes. yes, get the book. Yes, get the book. You can go to Amazon.com and get the book and find out what are those three prophetic words that she delivered that was mm -hmm. the catalyst to change my life because a few weeks before. I was in a low rider car and we were bumping to ice cube and everybody was passing a joint and I was chilling, you know, and I get a page. Remember the pagers? Oh yeah. The page. pagers. Yeah. And the pagers, the significance of that page was that if I can take that order on, then I will be elevated to another high level of the gang. And mm -hmm. I was moving fast and I was growing fast and I was earning my respect. Now there was three R's of the gang world that we had to earn retaliation, reputation, and respect. The three R's that you're willing to live and die for. Matter of fact, I had a saying in the gang that every business has a motto. So it was our business. We live to die and die to live for the barrio. Wow. That became our purpose. That became our destiny. That became the reason why we grew strong And I was inside of that low rider, but I I, I, be, I got this page and I told my homeboy, stop the car, homie. That's the name of the chapter. Stop the car, homie. I got to make this call. I got to get the orders from the OGs so we can go take care of this. Man, shut your mouth, homie. <laughs> ah, blah, blah, blah. And a scuffle began to take place. The big homie in the front said, Just give me the page, homie. I said, no, that's my job. You're going to take my job. That was, I needed that job. I mm -hmm. needed that. You know, when you're on a job, you're looking for a promotion. That was my promotion. Yeah. Yet, when he stepped out of the vehicle, again, if I tell you, you don't want to read the book. <laughs> What happened at that moment brought me all the way to where my sister came into my, my world. And delivered three of the most powerful words she ever get, could give to me at that moment. Yeah, That began to ignite me. When I read Jeremiah 29, 11, for a lot of people, they read it and they you know, want to prosper. And, they, and it's great. I read it years later and it said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I didn't continue reading. I broke down and cried. Mm. Wow. Here, somebody made a plan for me. No one ever made a plan for me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm valued enough that someone decided to make a plan for Beautiful. me before I was even a bleep on the monitor. Of course, I, I read the rest of the scripture afterwards that God didn't want to get even with me. He got even at the cross. He used yes. Jesus Christ to get even for my sin, everything that I was dealing with. Then I, my sister invited me to this church service, and I thought that she had set me up. Now you have to understand, Year weeks later, I got inside of another vehicle because we had to go do a hit. But something felt different in that lowrider again. Nobody was smoking. Nobody was cussing. The, the vehicle was quiet. There was no music playing. And all of a sudden, I felt something. Something. Wow. I'm about to die. Something. Mm. Is, this, is a, this is a setup. I looked wow. around, and, and, and the homeboys weren't talking. I noticed guns. I noticed all mm. this. We get in, and, and, and all of a sudden, I forgot what my sister had told me that Saturday morning, and I forgot. And as we passed that church that she had invited me to, it's like I felt hope. Something inside of me rose and gave me the authority to speak up. Now, I knew better because you don't disrespect the OGs, the shock callers. Yeah. These guys can turn around and put a bullet in your brain without thinking twice. Right. And I something inside of me said, stop the car, homie. And we got into an argument. One of the homeboys pulled a gun on me and he says, you need to shut your mouth, danger. We got to go take care of this. I said, no, stop the car, homie. I got to go take care of some business. I got to, I promised my sister, listen, I was a gangster of all gangsters, but my word was my word. 
my yes was my yes even back wow. then. Wow. Mm. And something inside of me, and listen, some of you need to stand up and contend for your family right now. Yes. Some of you need to contend for your marriage. Some of you need to contend for the call of God okay, in your life. Yes. Say, stop the car. Stop everything that you're doing. I got to follow God's will. I got to do this for God. Yet people are afraid to stand up to the giants in their life. Yeah. Right. To their success, to their failure. Sometimes you have to say, excuse me, but I got to go take care of me right now. Excuse yeah. me. I'm broken. I'm in pain. I know my, 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 my book is out. I know my successful marriage is going good, but there's something inside of me that if I don't stop right now, it's going to change everything. I had to force myself. We got in an argument. Finally, one of the homeboys vouched for me and said, man, let danger go, homie. That was my nickname, danger. When danger was given to me, it was given out of the moment of the baptism of the soul. I talk about that in my book as a chapter called the baptism of the soul. And some of you have been baptized with soul ties that you can't let go of the past. You can't wow. let you're married and you're still wow. thinking about your ex-girlfriend. Mm. You're married and you're still thinking about your ex-husband. You're met. Oh, come on. You're going to make me preach those soul ties. Because when I got jumped yeah, into the true. gang, they were after my soul, guys. Yeah. When I got jumped in, I got jumped in by four gang members and they used every ounce of flesh pounding me. I had never been uh, abused. I had never wow. been in a situation wow. where flesh meets flesh. Yet when I went in to get jumped in as a gang member, I was 11 years old. I was oh, being introduced crazy. to the gang when I was eight years old, nine years old. They were luring me in. They were molding me. They were formatting me. You know, yet by the time I got to get jumped in, I went in as a little boy and I came out as a fierce wolf ready mm. for revenge. It changed me. It changed the way I walk. It changed the way I talk. It changed the way I carried myself. It took every ounce of fear and I became an animal. How can animals attack and hunt animals? That's what we were. Yet when my sister came in and delivered that word, I found myself in that low rider. You got to get the book, by the way, Amazon.com, mm -hmm. because I know you find yourself in a vehicle of life that you're fighting either to stay in or, or get out of that car. Some of you are in marriages that you got to walk away from. Some of you are in relationships you got to let go of. Some of you are in business deals that you have to move away from. Otherwise, it's going to destroy you. I mm. didn't realize that by me walking out of that car will be the last time I will see my homeboys. Wow. And as I walk up to that church that you're talking about, I begin to hear the sounds that I was not used to. I was used to listening to Tupac, Snoop Dogg, N.W.A., yeah. Yeah. You know, movies like American Me, Boys in the Hood, Colors, Blood In and Blood Out were given an insight, a glimpse of the inner city of Los Angeles of gang members. Yet the world didn't pay attention to it. I'm walking up and I'm hearing this sounds of out of tune guitars, singing that was <laughs> mediocre, but there was a presence. People were yeah. joyful. As I'm walking in, I can smell the tamales, the pupusas. I can smell <laughs> I, my people, my culture. And I'm thinking that my sister set me up, man. I'm walking up to that church, and there's gang members on the left side that look like me. And I grabbed wow. my two guns. I had a bandana on, my lokes on, my white shirt, black dickies, and black Nike Cortez. People knew I was a gang member, believe me. I couldn't be seen in those places. My reputation was everything to me. My yeah. ego, my narcissism was everything. It was feeding the survival and the pain and, the, and wow. the structure that I had inside of me. Yet, as I walked in, I looked to the right and there's old gang members there. It's filled with 500 people. And I'm looking, my sister set me up, Holmes. And I grabbed my guns. But then I looked to the, to the left and I see these gang members and they had their hands raised and they're praising God. I look to the right and I see the OGs, gang members dressing suits and they're clapping, cheering. And I'm thinking, what is going on? Where's my, I don't find my sister anywhere. Yet the man that was about to give the message was one of my ex enemies that became a pastor. It's such an amazing story. It's such an amazing story. Bizarre. Uh huh. Yet God in that moment began to change me. I can't tell you what happened in that room, but something powerful happened that turned things around because I want to tell you something. And I know our time is leaving us, but I want to tell you something. For some people watching, Jesus, 
the Bible, going to church may be a ritual for you that you learned growing mm. up. But for me, it was life or death. The greatest miracle I've ever seen in my life is not someone healed with cancer, which I want to see. I've never seen anybody being raised from the dead. I want to see it, and I'm expecting to see it as a mm -hmm. believer. I had the faith to do it. But the greatest miracle that we forget is that man's heart can change for the gospel of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. A man's heart can be transformed from the gangs, from the gang culture, from the world said, lock him up, throw the key away, to surrendering his life to Jesus Christ like he'd never done in his life before. Yes. The next day, and I write about it in my book, my homeboys are waiting for me because I have to face them. A lot of people don't want to face their, oh man, a lot of people don't want to face reality. They don't want to face the problem. Right. I had to face my homeboys. And when I walked in, I walked in and I was greeted with a shotgun in my back, a pistol in my forehead and a pistol in my chest and my homeboys watching me. And they asked me, where were you last night? And I knew if I said the wrong thing, my brains will be dropped right. in yeah. a cold concrete floor. So I knew it was not my time to say anything. They began to question me. I didn't realize what had happened the night before. That's why they were, they, they were going berserk. You got to read the book to find out what happened the night before that drove them to put up. Listen, this were my homeboys. I was willing and yeah. willing to live and die for them, go to prison for them. Now I'm an enemy to them. Yeah. But inside, I couldn't deny what happened Saturday night. It was the wow. first moment. I look back now as I wrote this book. That was the first sermon, evangelistic sermon I ever gave. It was in, to my own homeboys. You have to read what happened because amazing. when I began to share, one of the OGs said, enough. Enough, Mondo. Enough, danger. You got a lot of heart to come in here talking like this, homie. It took everything. I knew it. I knew that my, I knew I was dead. I knew because I've seen it before. Yet inside of me, I said, God, I at least, at least I made things right with you, God. Mm. I am a, yeah. listen, I had never felt so much peace in my life. I was searching for peace. I was searching for love. And that Saturday night, what changed my life was for the first time in my life, I felt peace and love that surpassed the understanding of this world. So that beautiful. moment was a critical moment that launched me to where I am today. It's amazing. So you wrote amazing. something in your book that really stood out to Janet on page 88. Um, do you want to read that, Janet? Yeah, I do. I, I was so touched um, with what took place that Saturday night. And I do want to encourage everybody to get a copy of this book, My Crazy Life, because I felt like as I was reading the experience that took place, I felt I was right there with you. Yeah. And and just feeling that love and that acceptance um, and knowing that your life now was forever marked and forever changed. It was so impacting to me. But I read this part that says, that's why I believe altar calls are powerful. Mm. The church should never give up on altar calls and never stop mm. giving the message of salvation in every sermon and on every mm. television program, because you never know where people are. You never know when it's someone's last moment. Wow. And that really stood out to me because, you know, we, we, we minister, whether it's on the glory Bible study on different television platforms um, different conferences. It is vital for the opportunity for someone to yeah. accept Jesus Christ every single, we every ha single we moment. We have to throw the lifeline. We yeah. have to be willing just to cast it. And if nobody responds, then that's that. Yeah. But if somebody does respond, their life is changed for eternity. You it's know, we, we forget that the gospel is for the whosoever will. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I wrote in the book, we can't fall in love with the gifts and the calling of God. Yes. The will of God is to save every man, every woman, every yes. child. Listen, we, we, we are so good at, at, at using our gifts and praying for people and giving words to people. And those are all fantastic. And it becomes part of our repertoire that we use. And in order for people to become part of our membership program and all. But listen, nothing becomes greater than creating room in heaven yes. because you never know who's in that room. Absolutely. And that room was a broken little boy that was needing to help. Yes. A little boy that was screaming a silent scream, yet no one can hear him. In that moment, 
I told the preacher, I don't think your God can forgive me. Mm. I don't think your God is able to do this and that. And as I'm getting ready to walk out of that room, there's an old song. En la cruz, en la cruz, yo primero vi la luz. Y los pecados de mi alma el salvó. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Yeah. And a tear, a tear. <laughs> they weren't singing good. The guitar only had a few strings on it. Mm-hmm. But there was an anointing in that room, and the altar yes. call came. And this man hugged me like I'd never been hugged in my life. Mm-hmm. And he grabbed my face like a father would. And he says, he loves you. He's crazy <laughs> about you. Whenever you're ready, he's ready to walk with you and make things right with you. He says, don't leave this room knowing that there's a bullet with your name on it. Don't leave this room knowing that you heard the gospel for the very first time. And I beg people, don't ever miss out on giving the message of salvation. Don't ever leave a Bible study without giving an invitation to Jesus Christ. Don't ever miss out an opportunity to let people know that he's crazy about them. Yes. And no matter where they find themselves, I don't know if you're a Democrat. I don't know if you're a liberal. I don't know if you're a, a conservative. I don't know if you're a homosexual. I don't know if, listen, he loves you. He loves you as much yes. as he loved Billy Graham. Yes. Whenever you're ready, he's ready to work with you. I want to tell people, if I ever have a message in this book is don't give up on people. Don't stop loving, hurting people. They need to know the gospel more than ever. They need to know that God can forgive them of their sins, forgive them of their pain, yes. walk with them. Even if, Listen, it's taken me 26 years to work through the process of forgiveness. Don't rush God. God's will is for you to have an intimate moment with him where your intimate pain, your in, the moment, the, the place, you said it, Pastor, the place where you were hurt, is the place yeah. that he wants to work with you. So when God yes. gives you the ability to give you yes. a platform, the enemy doesn't attack you there and, and, and knocks you down. You know what I've learned from Jim Baker is that Jim Baker said years ago, the devil knocks you down and then kicks you for falling. Oof. And Isn't I learned that the, that the devil knocks you down, but then he wants to kick you for falling and mm-hmm. blame you and put shame on you yeah. and, and lose hope on you. But I want to tell you something. If God can use an ex-gang member like Mondo, if God can pick Mondo out of a group where the world to lock him up and throw the key away, yeah. can you imagine what God can do for you? I have a syndicated television program as a Hispanic ex-gang member that airs on the PTL network. <laughs> I'm an Come ex-gang on. member that is Latino, that the world said he's no good, and he's co-hosting a national television program with a man that the world saw fall, a man that was restored, but a man that called to birth Christian television on Jim yeah. Baker. You may not pick him, but God did. Yeah. Yeah. And God put Jim Baker in this ex-gang member. And we met at the Los Angeles Dream Center with Tommy Barnett and Matthew Barnett saw something in me. They couldn't understand it themselves. He said, there's something about you that God wants us to protect. And then they give me the job to take care of their high profile guests. And don't tell yeah. Pastor Tommy. And, it's and, hilarious. And Matthew, don't tell him this. <laughs> I'm going to share something very private that nobody knows. <laughs> they gave me the job to drive their guests around. And I didn't have a driver license. <laughs> That's the part you didn't include in the book. <laughs> no, no, no. But guess what? I knew my mission. Funny. I said, God, you're going to protect me. You're going to see me through this. Mm-hmm. I never thought that God was going to pick Jim Baker to be my spiritual father, my mentor. Wow. But you have to understand, as a little boy, my dream was to be on television. Wow. But I didn't tell anybody. God I was afraid. Way. God and then who does God pair me up with? The pioneer of Christian television. Yeah. It, it's bizarre. Amazing. It's amazing. It's all in your book. All and I highly recommend that everybody that's watching go get a copy <laughs> of My Crazy Life by Mondo de la Vega. Yes. It is out today. It's hot off the press. Today yes. is the release date. So you can get it everywhere the books are sold. Uh, Mondo, you've got a website. People can Listen, go Listen, I hope to have it up. The Mondoshow.com. You can go there. If it's not up, come back because I'm going to have it up there. I'm working through the process of doing all this. But I want you to just stay connected with all of us. We need you more than ever. We need you to support us with prayer. We need your support financially so we can preach the gospel. 
I want every person to order an extra one and get it into the hands of every gang member that you know. Come yes. On. People that are hurting. Listen, this book is not just a gang member story. This book, listen, I had a, I had a, a, a thing the other day where I had different people from different backgrounds and every single one of them were touched because we all have been through pain. We all have been rejected. Yes. We all have created an image that people fall in love with, yet it, it wasn't us. I'm telling you, this book is going to restore the faith and inspire. My message is this. Don't give up on your dreams. Yeah. I never gave up on mine. 26 years ago, God played a role in my heart to bring this to pass. And I hung on to that dream. Then my dream as a little Amazing. boy was to do television. And here I am on a national syndicated two programs. Amazing. It's amazing. Preaching the gospel to the people that nobody, listen, I want the people nobody want. I want the rejected, the broken, the bruised, yes. the confused. I want them on my side because I want I want them to know yes. that there's hope for them. Yes. Those are the ones that Jesus is looking for. Mondo, thank you so much oh, for joining us on Glory Bible you. Study. It has been such a blessing. Your testimony is not only inspiring, it brings so much hope for a hurting thank world. You. And that's what we need today. We need a lot of hope in this hurting world. So yes, thank you so much. I pray that everybody goes out and gets a copy of your book and uh, go to Mondo's website, <laughs> support his ministry. Um, go ahead and watch his show. When does your show air? Where does it air? Listen, every Monday on the PTL network, you can check the channel listings. If you go to ptlnetwork.com, check the channel listings for your area. Uh, I have some of the greatest guests. I'm hoping to have the two of you on my guest as my guests. Awesome. I want to learn more about what God is doing. And listen, I have an orange couch that is the most obnoxious thing that you can ever <laughs> find. It. But that orange <laughs> couch, one I, on I have, listen, it's right there. But 30 seconds. This is a this is a message for you because somebody was going to throw that orange couch out. And I Whoa. said, wait a minute. I, I walked. I said, don't throw the orange couch. I said, I, can, yeah. I will use it one day. Wow. That orange couch, orange couch is a representation of my life. When people want to throw you away, wow. when it doesn't make sense to be part of it in life, who in their right mind will put that orange couch in their living room? Nobody. But right. it only belongs in the place that God has set a place for. That's so true. Who so would ever good. thought the orange couch will become a very famous couch? And now Thanks. it's on the cover of your book. <laughs> it's Come amazing. Oh, That's so man. awesome. Thank you guys for having me. It's been an honor and a privilege. And please, I want you on my show I want to awesome. hear what God is doing in your life. And if you're ever in the area, please come and join me on the Orange Couch. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much. It's been such a privilege. God bless you. God, God bless you. you. Listen, you guys, what, wow, what an evening at Glory Bible Study with such a powerful testimony. I know that many of you, even as you're watching this, you're feeling the pull. You're feeling yes. that stir. What Mondo was talking about, a life that can be totally changed and revolutionized by Jesus. Some of you are watching, you're saying, I need this Jesus. I need to respond to this Jesus that you're talking about. We can't close Glory Bible Study tonight without giving you this opportunity mm -hmm. to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you want to get right with God, just pray this prayer with us. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I repent of my I sins. I come to you right now. I come to you right now. And I receive your gift. And I receive your gift of salvation. Of salvation through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. Be my personal Lord and Savior. Be my personal Lord and Savior. Help me to be the person that you created me to be. Help me to be the person you've created. I want to live be. for you. I want to live for you. As you lead me. As you lead and me. And guide me. And guide me. And help me. And help me. For all of my days. For all of my days. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer, the Bible tells us that the angels in heaven are celebrating and rejoicing right now yes. because you have just given your life to be a child of God. You've recognized your true identity, and now you're part of his heavenly kingdom, and you have an eternal salvation that's been secured you, forever. Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa, what a night. What a night. I'm just we're gonna be talking about this for speechless. days. Yes, I'm speechless <laughs> because it's just so God is so good, and it just shows how each and every life is so valuable, yeah, and so vital. 
for such a time as this. Absolutely. And we all carry a message. And now those that have accepted Jesus, you carry a message yeah. of goodness, of transformation, of grace, of glory. And now God's going to use you to share that message to someone else. Absolutely. And listen, talking about message, you've got to get a copy of this book, My Crazy Life. For real, I haven't been able to put it down. It is so captivating. The stories are engaging. And Mondo left a whole lot of blanks out of the story tonight. So you have to get a copy of the book and read it. And like he said, you want to get another copy to share with somebody else. God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you for joining us here at Glory Bible Study. We'll see you next week right here, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday night. Remember, the glory loves you, and so do we. Thank you.